Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of our program. This is Mike Saunders with Marketing Huddle, and today we're privileged to have with us Peter Shankman. Peter's the founder of Shank Minds, which is an online community of business professionals from around the world who come together and give great advice, increase the business, and improve lives. Additionally, Peter is the founder and CEO of The Geek Factory, a boutique social media marketing and PR strategy firm located in New York City with clients worldwide. Welcome to the program, Peter. Uh, pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Hey, you're welcome. And I, of course, we see you all over the place. And um, like your bio says, in the few moments you have uh, uh, free each month, you run marathons and skydive and all these crazy things. Um, so what I would like to start off by asking you is, where do you fit in your industry development with keeping your finger on the pulse of seeing these trends and what's coming ahead? Because as you know, if you're not leading, you're falling behind and you always seem to be um, on that cutting edge and seeing the next great thing and having all of these, you know, um, interesting uh, industry trends in the marketing and PR world. So what is your secret and what is your process for staying in touch with that Thanks. Well, I think I think for me, a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, I have I've been diagnosed several years ago with ADHD. As a matter of fact, I run the number one, I host the number one podcast on ADHD uh, and using it as a gift called Faster Than Normal. And um, I'm just very into sort of I, I like information. I like knowing what's going on. So I find uh, that over the course of the day, I might uh, check on things or do some research, or do some homework, hundreds of times uh, over the course of the day. I, my day usually starts around 3:45 in the morning. Um, I get up ridiculously early. I spend the majority of my morning uh, at the gym. While I'm at the gym, I'm listening to, or, or running outside. While I'm doing that, I'm listening to podcasts that I've downloaded overnight. Uh, that's how I get my news. Um, when I get back and take a shower, um, I have the Amazon Echo, which uh, gives me more information, uh, tells me about the weather, tells me about what I'm doing, tells me about whatever. So, you know, um, I have, I've set up several tools and uh, several uh, automated processes that get me information. But, you know, I'm also just a very, very big listener. I believe that the majority of people um, talk way more than they listen, and that's just a huge mistake. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. And, and I think that if we took that one piece of advice right there, um, as far as listening, that's wonderful. But but the, the vibe I get from your um, introduction there is if we are trying to convince someone, let's say in a sales situation, sometimes you just need to just cut to the chase. And I think that sometimes people, you, you talk yourself out of a sale by just rambling and then getting to a pitch. Sometimes you need to have your, your reputation precede you, meet with that person, just lay it out and see where it, where it lays. And I think that's what, your, what some of your concepts there are, which is, you know, let's get the top podcast. Let's listen to the news, the headlines of the news, the things that I want to get. So um, my question would be, if we had a snapshot of your, you know, iPod or your podcast, um, what are the top two or three podcasts that you're listening to each day? Uh, so what do I listen to? I listen to, um, so Dan Norris is a great one, um, which is called Tropical MBA. I listen to Tropical mm-hmm. MBA. I'm actually a huge, currently a huge fan of the, the West Wing Weekly, which is a recap of all the West Wing episodes. Listening to that because um, it's just so much fun to, to take a break every once in a while and remember uh, probably one of the best shows on TV. Um, <laughs> that's also great because I create content all the time, so there's nothing wrong with listening to little Aaron Sorkin to put you in the mood for some great writing. Um, I listen to various things from the BBC, various things from um, NPR, love NPR. Um, I, catch, I try to get the New York Times and Wall Street Journal. They have a few good ones. Um, what else do I listen to? There are a couple of uh, specific ones to my life, so Triathlon, um, Apple Computers. Uh, what else do I listen to? Um, skydiving, swimming, uh, things of that nature. Basically, I, I like to be well informed on a variety of topics. I, like to, I want to be the smartest. I want to be the smartest person at the party, not at the room. You don't want to be the smartest person in the room because if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. You want to be yeah. the smartest person at the party because then you just have a lot to talk about. But um, yeah, but uh, yeah. So I listen to a ton of stuff, and uh, I read one magazine. It's called The Week, and it comes out every Friday. And within 20 minutes, it's a 20 minute read. You read the entire magazine, and you know a little bit about everything that happened over the previous week. It's, it's brilliant. 
you know, and I love that because it's kind of like just give me that, uh, uh, I don't know, matrix cord in the back of my head and download it in there and just give me what I need. And that's kind of like how some of the, you know, top RSS feeds, you know, just give me the highlights of the blogs I want to know. I don't want to sift through all the mess. And uh, kind of talking about being the smartest person in the room, doesn't that play into your shank minds um, online community where you can kind of draw off of those smart people and maybe you're not the smartest person in that room, but then when you vibe off of all those people, then the next room you go into, then you're the smartest person in that room. <laughs> exactly. You know, look, at the end of the day, I think that I can learn something from everyone, no matter who they are. And so I never go in thinking I'm smart at all. I go in thinking I want to be the quietest person there and start to learn. And mm-hmm. only, only once I've gathered information and really sucked everything up, can I really then start to talk. You know, there's a great quote that I, was, that I heard once. Uh, I dated a woman, and her mother was very Southern. She, you know, she said, Suge and y'all. And she's just an adorable. I love the mother, I think, more than I ever loved the daughter. She's just so cool. But um, one of the things she, ever, she said to me that I always, I always remember was, um, uh, she, 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 Suge, God gave us two ears and one mouth so we could listen twice as much as we talk. And I always remember that quote, and it's so true. It's so true. You want to listen uh, at least two times more than you, or three times more than, two times more than you talk. No question about it. But it's so, so hard because I think if you are a good, uh, and we'll just kind of use it in the marketing and sales realm, if you're good at that, you tend to have that diarrhea of the mouth and not that listening skill. But but studies and research have shown that when you are the person asking the questions and when in the sales situation or this you know um, interaction, you are perceived as the one that's the expert because you're asking questions. But why do you think it is so hard to listen more than you talk? Well, there's a big difference also. I mean, understand that, that a lot of what I do also is I go on, uh, I go on TV, I give speeches, things like that. Uh, you know, people want to hear you speak. But yeah. when you're in a room, when you're at a dinner, when you're at a conference, when you're at a party, when, you, when I'm not the one on stage, you know, the greatest thing in the world that you can do is just listen. Because everyone has something to, to, to share. Everyone has some interesting information. And it's just so great to be able to learn that if you, if you take the time to do it. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And and I think that maybe dip your toe in the water and kind of force yourself to do it and feel like and feel that it's not as hard as it seemed and then get the person's reaction and maybe that person kind of leaves the conversation going, "Dang, dang, that guy was a was a, was really fun to talk to." And you're going, "I said two words, I just listened." But I think that that's it's it's just that just that doing of it. Hey, regarding um fast and ADHD and things like that, are there any tools that you would um, recommend? And I'm thinking of one um, regarding, you know, listening and, and, and quickness. I've used this for years, and I know it's not indicative of an external tool, but it's called MySpeed, and you can get Chrome extensions. But if you're listening to an online webinar or something, uh, MP3, you can speed up the, um, the, the delivery rate because you can hear a lot faster than people talk typically. Do you find that that um, actually works to help capture your attention to finish that content? Oh, yeah. I listen to the majority of my podcasts. Uh, the majority of my podcasts are, um, I listen to a double speed easily. Um, you know, it, it's funny. People tell me that on my podcast, they actually can't, they're used to listening to things double speed. They actually can't listen to my podcast on double speed because I talk so damn fast to begin with. But... Uh, I listen to every podcast on double speed. It's just so much, uh, it's so yeah. much more useful to me. Of course, then when you go see the speakers live or hear them live, then it's like I don't even know who that person is. I'm so, <laughs> so used to hearing them talk fast. <laughs> What's very wrong with that guy? Hey, um, let's talk about your book, uh, Customer Service, New Rules for a Social Media World. You know, it just seems like when you think of, you know, like the thought leadership um, uh, of, uh, out there, you know, you've got all of these customer experiences and, you know, Jay Bear's talking about it and Brent Solis and, and yourself. What is the, what is the uh, big, big monumental shift with the customer service and the new rules of that surrounding the customer? Yeah, it's very easy. You can sum it up in a few words. The, the concept of the, the next 50 years is going to be run by the customer economy and the respect that if I, <clears throat> if I um, have an experience online or offline, regardless of what that experience is, it's going to be shared whether I want to share it or not. It's whether, you know, I, I can go online, I can go leave a Yelp review, but that's rather pointless because the network knows exactly what I'm doing and when I'm doing it. The network knows where I am, the network knows what I'm doing, the network knows where I have dinner, it knows what credit card I'm using. So the more I can do things um, that are fun and the more I can have good experiences, the more I'm going to want to go back and do those again. The more the network is going to want to share them, uh, the more the the network is going to say, okay, Peter really likes doing this, 
So the more it's going to be shared already. Um, so it's no longer about leaving a review. It's simply about the actions that I do are uh, immediately shared by the world automatically. There's absolutely no point in doing any, you know, stop telling people, oh, let's, you know, try and find the likes or anything like that. It's more about let's do more likable things. Yes, like Seth Godin says uh, about being remarkable, you know, you want to be the person that's worthy of being remarked about. You know, you don't need to say click the like button. You just need to do stuff that makes them compelled to click the like button. Yep. I've been saying that forever. It's phenomenal. So how do you feel that the customer experience then ties into that? Shouldn't, shouldn't the customer experience and then the, the customer journey, all of that just really tie in together? And really it's the customer service is the culmination of that. It has to be. So co- companies have to understand that customers um, control the direction of their business. It's not um, – not companies, it's not people, it's the customers themselves. They control the direction of your business. And if you're not doing what they want, if you're not listening to them, if you're not giving them the information they want, um, they'll simply go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because guess what? Uh, Your your alternative, your competitor is one click away. And people are so fickle today. And you know what? It's the it's the the lifestyle that we live. It's the Snapchat and the Instagram and the text and the this and that and the other that has trained us to just go, fine, done. As opposed to today I had someone come out and fix my garage door and I've, uh, he was out 10 years ago to fix my garage door and he knew the people be- that owned the house before me and he knew their kids. And it's like, that's a dying breed, and it's wonderful that you have those relationships. And he doesn't even take credit cards yet. To, you know, I mean, it's just unbelievable. Whereas on the other hand, you get companies that are click, 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 transaction done, and if you upset them, here's a bad Yelp review, a tweet, and they're off to your competitor. Exactly. And it's not even the Yelp review. It's simply the fact that if I do something and keep doing it and keep doing it, you know, let's say I like a, ste- a certain steakhouse in New York. If I keep going to that steakhouse, then you are going to, uh, if you're looking for a steakhouse in New York City, you're going to see that I go there a lot. If I all of a sudden stop going there for some strange reason, well, then you're not even going to notice that it's in my feed anymore. So when you're looking for steakhouse, it's not going to show you that one. But if I go to that steakhouse all the time, when you're in New York and you're searching for steakhouses on Google Maps, the one that I go to first is going to come up. Or the one I go to is going to come up first before the regular ones in the map because it goes, it's a person you know. That's Isn't there a story mean. about social media and a steakhouse? There is. Uh, Morton's delivered a steak to me at the airport, but that's not, totally not this because at the end of the day, uh, that's not Morton's job. Morton's job is to deliver an amazing experience when you go to their restaurant which they do. But, and so but the I, point, and, and I remember I seeing you on, uh, J.J. Ramberg had asked you that question, and it stuck in my mind. But the takeaway is people are listening. And, and most of the time it's the brand saying something and the customer listening, not the, the, the brand listening and delivering. So we don't want to right, set the exactly stage for... Right, that's exactly my point. It needs, yeah. Exactly. It needs, to be the, it needs to be the brand listening for a change. Yeah, it, it is refreshing, and, and then that really does separate you from the crowd. Hey, you know, let's, uh, let's chat real briefly about um, you as an angel investor. Um, think, of, think of a pitch that you heard that was just spot-on, spectacular, whether you mentioned the company or not, but what was it that really made you sit up and take notice and go, that is spot-on? Um, the Standard Hotel, there was an explosion in New York a couple of days ago, and the Standard Hotel immediately posted something on their site that says, if you live... Uh, between 23rd, on 23rd Street between 6th and 7th Avenue in the area of the explosion, simply bring a proof of your ID and we'll give you a hot meal and a place to stay for the night. You know, they don't get anything out of it other than being decent people. So mm-hmm. that's really important. That's really important. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, when things are selfless, you know, because when, when you you can tell if someone's leading off trying to get, you know, they're holding something up and kind of dangling something in the background, you're like, I can tell, smell something fishy here. But, yeah, when it is purely just selfless, that's uh, that's wonderful. When, yep. when, you're, when you're giving some advice to an early startup uh, company, what are some things that you would say, definitely make sure you don't make this mistake or this mistake when thinking about going in looking for funding? The biggest mistake you can make is not doing your homework. I can't tell you how many people have come to me and asked for funding or asked to get invested in or whatever and have done absolutely no 
homework on me whatsoever. It's truly amazing. But guys, this isn't rocket science. By a long shot, it's not that hard. I mean, for Christ's sake, go into Google. I'm there. You know? Yep, it's called the Google resume for a reason, huh? <laughs> uh huh. What are you What are you seeing um, looking forward? Then let's uh, let's let's think about your shank minds and the you know the 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 brain trust that that is. What do you feel in the next three to five to seven years or so is going to be the next big thing in the kind of the marketing or the the technology world? What should we be watching out for um, to take advantage of? I think uh, we're looking at going to see a lot of um, artificial intelligence. We're going to see a lot of augmented reality. Uh, we're going to see a lot of, again, I think it's going to come down to having tremendous amounts of empathy from employees, from people knowing that they uh, matter, from employees knowing that they matter, and from that, customers feeling like they matter. Yeah, you know what? I agree. I agree with that statement, and, and the thing that's coming to my mind is, uh, it's it's something that a brand or a business uh, or an entrepreneur needs to keep in mind is to not let that be the only driving factor in this sense. If you just view everything as augmented and virtual reality and artificial artificial intelligence, where's the relationship and where's the Seth Godin tribes or where is the, you know, the feeling that, you know, we are loyal to that brand. So I think that you've got two things working there is to strive to provide that, but then have that balance of kind of really making someone feel part of that process and engaged. Of course, you want to be a human being. You know, yeah. At the end of the day, companies, companies, people want people, they want to deal with people they want a big company. They want to buy their product from a big company, but they want people to deal with when they have a problem. Yeah, yeah, isn't that interesting? It's like um, I don't, I don't really want to call, you know, and, and even even knowing that someone's on the other side of the instant chat, you know, I don't really want to sit on hold to an eight hundred number. I can go to you know uh, gethuman dot com and figure out an eight hundred number phone tree and get someone, but that takes too much time. But if I can pop on and do a chat and have someone answer a question, at least you're assuming it's a human in the background. But yeah, you want that instant, instant connection, and that's using some automation and some artificial intelligence really wisely um, because that that's kind of internal routing. I think that's that's a really, really uh, huge, huge factor. Hey, so uh, what's another? Uh, what's a What's a, do you do book reading as well, or, or is that something that takes a lot of time and you just want to have those podcasts? You no, know, I read books on planes, actually. When I'm not writing on planes, I read books on planes. Uh, most recently, I'm, I just finished a book called Skyfaring, which is a book about a pilot and his international travels. Very, very good book. Um, uh, what else am I reading? Uh, I just finished writing a book, uh, my fifth book. This one's on ADHD as a gift. Um, that'll be published next year, so that's kind of exciting. Um, but yeah, I, I try to read uh, whenever I can. But it, it does take, you know, I, I don't, I don't have a lot of physical items anymore. I've, I've really downshifted my life. I don't, I don't keep a lot of things. So I usually, uh, I, I get things online. I, I, you know, I download um, uh, either on Kindle or, or uh, Apple, Apple Books, I, I, iBooks, whatever they're called. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it really is something where you, sometimes you read a 200-page book and go, you know what, that could have been said. The main point of that book could have been said in about 112 pages, and, and so sometimes those condensed versions are, are super good. So I just want to wrap up with saying thank you for your time. I know you're super busy, and thank you for some of these uh, pieces of wisdom. What's the, the best way that people can learn more about you and what you do? Is it uh, shankman.com, or, or what, what are some of the best places they can find you? Yeah, my, li- my life is at shankman.com, and the uh, mastermind is at shankminds.com. The podcast is faster than normal.com. Excellent. Well, Peter, thank you again for your time. It was wonderful getting to know you, and uh, we appreciate your, uh, your uh, generosity of your time. Pleasure was mine. Take care. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.